Greetings, everyone. So this is going to be the first video in our flexible budgets and direct cost variances. So this is basically standard costing. And let's start out with a little bit of review. Let's first talk about the difference in standard costing versus normal costing. And you'll recall that normal costing is where we took an estimated rate that we calculated and we use that rate to allocate overhead. So normal costing, when we, when we think normal costing, we're usually thinking about larger numbers or budgeted numbers. So these are more broad terms. Versus in standard costing, these numbers are typically expressed in on a per unit basis. So typically expressed on a per unit basis. So when we talk about a standard, we can think about this is what we, sh we should have paid. For example, on a per hour for our labor, this is the labor rate that we should have paid. Or this is how much per unit we should have paid for our materials. Uh, things of that nature is what we mean by on a per unit basis. Now, when we're talking about standard costing also, we want to compare what we thought would happen, in other words, what we budgeted to happen, what we budgeted we would have to pay our labor, versus what actually happened. And when we compare these two things, more likely than, than not, they are not going to, to be equal. They're not going to match. And because they don't, because they are different, we call this difference a variance. So the difference between what actually happened, so the difference between actual and expected or budgeted, we could call that, that is called a variance. Now we're going to talk about a tool that we can use to calculate these variances. And we're going to start with materials and labor. And then in the next series or next chapter of material, we'll talk about how to calculate overhead variances. So we're going to use the same diagram for both materials and labor. So we'll put the material variances in red. And we'll put, let's say, labor variances in green here. Okay. So let's draw our chart. This is our tool that we're going to use. I always joke that this tool is almost as complicated as the T-account to draw. Um, so I call these pegs. So these little things that are sticking up from our diagram here, I call these pegs. The peg one is we're going to take our actual quantity and multiply that times our actual price. And we'll talk about what these mean here in just a second. In the center peg... We're going to take the actual quantity again, but now we're going to multiply that times a standard price. And the third peg, we're going to take a standard price and multiply that times the standard quantity. And let's um, change this around. Just to be consistent, I just want to change these terms around. Since we're putting quantity on top, let's just keep quantity on top. So we're going to do standard quantity times standard price. Okay, so I'm just moving them around so that we always have quantity on top. Okay, so the first one, the first variance, we'll talk about materials, is the difference in peg one and peg two. And this is called the price variance. And for materials, the difference in pegs 2 and 3 is called the quantity variance. Now, the difference in peg 1 and 2 for labor is typically called a rate variance. And the difference in pegs 2 and 3 for labor is typically called an efficiency variance. And we can use the same chart for both. Okay, so let's talk about these pegs for just a second really quickly. On the peg one, you see the, the phrase actual quantity. And students oftentimes get confused. They think that when they look at actual quantity, we're thinking production level. 
but we are looking for materials or labor variances. So when we see the words actual quantity, we mean actual quantity of materials or actual quantity of labor, whichever, whichever variances we're trying to calculate. So I need the actual quantity of materials, for example, not production level. So make sure you make that distinction. Okay, and here in a little bit, we're going to learn how to calculate these individual pieces if they're not given to us. Uh, but one more thing I want to show you on the chart. We can also sum the variances, and we'll see how to calculate this here in just a second, to get a flexible budget variance as well. Now, let's take this and look at an example. So here we have Howard Food manufactures pumpkin scones. So for January, it budgeted to purchase and use 15,000 pounds of pumpkin at 89 cents a pound. And they tell us that actual purchases and usage for January were 16,000 pounds at 82 cents a pound. It budgets for 60,000 pumpkin scones. Actual output was 60,800 pumpkin scones. And we need to compute the price and quantity variances for materials and the flexible budget variance. So the first thing we always do is draw our charts and label everything. So do that now on your paper, and I'm going to do it and then come back and we'll do this problem together. Okay, so here I have drawn my chart and labeled everything. Notice I'm using abbreviations now for the pegs, but we still can recognize what, what those are. Okay, so the first peg is actual quantity times actual price, and we are looking specifically at materials. So when we look at actual quantity, we're wanting quantity of materials. They tell us in the story that there were actual purchases and usage of materials were 16,000 pounds. So actual quantity will be 16,000. And now that we're in pounds, we also need to make sure that our rate is in pounds. So when we're thinking about actual price, we need to make sure the price is a per pound price. And the actual price was 82 cents a pound. So we're going to multiply this times 82 cent. And when we do that, we come up with $13,120. So now let's move to peg two. We've already found actual quantity to be 16,000. Standard price is the price we should have paid per pound of pumpkin. So let's see if we can find this in the story. They tell us that we budgeted to purchase and use 15,000 at 89 cents a pound. So that's the price we should have paid, 89 cents. So for peg two, we get $14,240. Well, now we can really find the price variance at this point. The price variance, again, is the difference in pegs 1 and 2. And when you get the difference in those two numbers, we find that to be $1,120. But variances, they don't have a sign. They don't have a negative or positive. They're always positive numbers, so they're, not a neg they're never a negative number. But they are either favorable or unfavorable. So we have to determine, is this variance a good variance or a bad variance? So the, all, the way I like for, to, tell, to tell people how to really look at this is to think about the difference in the equations. So don't look at the numbers right now. Just think about the difference in these equations. The only difference in pegs 1 and 2 is price. So let's focus on the price. So we have $0.82 cent that we actually paid for our pounds of pumpkin, and we thought we'd have to pay $0.89 cent per pound. So we are actually paying seven cent less per pound than we thought we'd have to pay for. This is a good thing when we get to pay less than we thought. So this ends up being a favorable variance. So now we can move to peg three. Well, we've already found standard price, so we can just use that over here under our standard price piece. So that's 89 cent. Now I'm going to give you the definition of standard quantity, and I want you to put stars all over it in your notes, and I want you to remember it. So the definition of standard quantity is what should have happened at the actual level of production. So let me repeat that. What should have happened at the actual level of production. So it's two pieces. What should have happened, here we're looking at materials. So in other words, how much pumpkin... How many pounds of pumpkin should have been used per scone? 
at the actual level of production. So what was my actual level of production? Well, let's look at that first. They tell me in the story that my actual output was 60,800 pumpkins. Pumpkin scones. So how many pounds of pumpkin should I have used per pumpkin scone? Well, they also tell me in the story that we budgeted to purchase and use 15,000 pounds of pumpkin, and that's based on producing 60,000 pumpkin scones. So 15,000 pounds of pumpkin to make 60,000 scones would tell me how much pumpkin I should have used per pumpkin scone at my actual level of production, which was 60,800. And I think if you do this math, we end up with 15,200, I believe. And if we multiply that times 89 cent, we get $13,528. So once again, we can now look at the difference in pegs two and three to get the quantity variance. So the difference in these two come out to be $712, and we need to determine if it's favorable or unfavorable. So once again, only look at the equations. Forget about the numbers right now. The only difference in pegs two and three is quantity. Our actual quantity of pounds of pumpkin was 16,000, but we should only have used 15,200 pounds at our actual level of production. So we used more than we should have for the number that we actually produced. That's not a good thing. So we used more pumpkin than we should have. So now let's look at the flexible budget variance. There's two ways we can get the flexible budget variance. One way is to take the sum of these two variances, and because they do have what we'll call signs, they have different signs. One is favorable, one's unfavorable. So if they have different signs, you get a difference. And the difference in these two is $408. And we carry down the sign with the highest number. So this would be favorable. Another way we can get this variance is to take the difference in pegs 1 and 3. So the difference in $13,120 and $13,528 is $408. It's favorable because the actual cost was less than the budgeted cost at $13,528. So therefore, it would be a favorable variance. So two ways you can get the flexible budget variance, whichever way you prefer, either one is perfectly fine.